Good morning and welcome to the 12th annual Gold Lab Symposium. Okay, so here we are, day two. We promised, and you could tell by reading in the uh, program, that day two is different than anything we've ever done. And feel free to send Meredith and me an email that says, that was fun, or don't do that again. Do whatever you want. We're going to try to learn from this. There are more people listening virtually than I think we've ever had in the in the hall, you know, at, at, at Munzinger. So there is some value it, that we could maybe have a bigger reach than than just in person. Um, so this day uh, has been constructed with unbelievable help from Craig Mundy, who you've heard speak here before, and Larry Hunter, who you've also heard speak here before, two of the smartest people I know, uh, and, and differently smart from each other, uh, which is great. And they met with uh, Meredith and me to kind of plan what to do. And so we divided the day into a few talks that are kind of warm-ups, good warm-ups. Don't, don't feel I'm diminishing anyone. Aaron Sendel and Robin Dowell from, uh, both Aaron and Robin Dowell are from CU in Boulder. Um, but they're people I've known for a long time, and they use big data to think, uh, as does Sendel. So, okay, so that's the beginning of thinking about big data. And Craig had an idea that we ought to put three people together, Craig, uh, Larry Hunter, and Mira Marati, who I don't know, but whose work I do know. And she's from OpenAI, a fantastic website. You have to all go to the OpenAI website and see the most miraculous things. And we decided that we would give them each 20 minutes or so to just talk about what they do, what they really do, you know, and again, using English because it gets tough, this stuff. Um, and then we asked the three of them to do a panel for um, almost two hours because they have so much to say. And during the panel discussion, which they, the three of them will uh, talk to each other, uh, they, I know things they think that are at least slightly different from each other, and all of it is kind of understandable if they help us. And they have committed to helping us, so it's going to be wonderful. I, I had a fourth person that I want to tell you a story about that was on my list of uh, most favored possible speakers ever. Uh, and she was not able to come. She's a new mother. She lives in England. Well, she could have also been virtual. Um, so I want to tell you about her. Um, she also has been written up recently in The New Yorker because she's a modern hero in this big data place. And her name is Hannah Fry. And I'm committed to every year trying to get her here. And if she sees this, she'll know that to expect us to call her again. Um, and she actually has written in this New Yorker article about how you shouldn't get confused about computers. They are not human. There are things they do better than humans will ever do, ever. But you shouldn't get confused into thinking that they are more than what they are, which is a construct, really. And Larry and, and uh, Craig and, uh, and, uh, and, and Mira, nice job, Larry and Mira, 
are going to talk a lot about that because it's a fascinating question. Are, are you trying to get the big data computers to look human, to be human, to fool you into thinking they're human? What, what's the, what, what do we really want uh, is going to be part of what they say. But I want to tell you a thing that you can see Hannah do. Uh, because it's one of the most wonderful things I've ever seen on the internet, ever in my life. And it made me into a fan. I read her books. I read this article about her. I can't, I'm stalking her for you. I'm, she'll come. Uh, she didn't come, but she'll come. Hannah, I'm warning you, you're coming. So, um, so she's teaching a class at University College in London. And it's, you know, it's 30 or so people sitting in a old stupid room and um, and she starts talking to the class about pathology hmm. uh, pathology and she's talking about how the best pathologists um, don't get the pathology right very at 99.9 percent .9%. they do okay 92 percent 94 percent but not 99 percent so they make human errors. And she had a new group of pathologists. Do you know this story, Meredith? <laughs> you do, okay. Um, she had a new group of pathologists that she was training to see if they could do better than the old pathologists who are world experts. They are called experts. So she trains the new path, the group of new pathologists, because you gotta train them, of course, if you're gonna do better than the, the best. And they have slides of, of breast tissue with cancer and a slide of a pathology slide of healthy tissue, sometimes from the same woman, sometimes not. And the, and the pathologists are trained, the new ones, are trained to distinguish breast cancer from not. And they're rewarded when they get it right so that they're reinforced, it's called, as you'll learn today more from Larry Hunter and Craig and Mira. There's reinforcement learning that's good. And um, the new pathologists get to be better than the old ones, the, the experts. And one of the new pathologists is so awful that they just take that pathologist out of the mix. And then the accuracy of the diagnostic calls goes to 99 or so percent. Wow, how did they do that? Well, it's not clear how they do it, but what is clear is that the new pathologists were fucking pigeons. <laughs> this is pigeons who did this. Pigeons were better than human pathologists at exactly what human pathologists are supposed to be trained to do. And so there was a pattern recognition skill um, that, that, uh, and by feeding, you know, I don't know what worms, I don't know what, how they condition these, I, that I don't remember. But there is something about intelligence that probably is dependent on nothing more than very sophisticated pattern recognition. And, and we want to understand that, don't we? We want to understand that to have some sense of... Um, to have some sense of how big data and the manipulations by computers will give us things that might be hard to get to with our piddling human brains. And one of the things you're gonna learn from Larry Hunter, because it's his whole life that I've known him, is that he imagines a dialogue between this non-human entity called the computer and himself or any of us and so you're trying to imagine a dialogue with a different species called a computer. I mean, or, you know, it's, it's going to be an amazing thing. And, and Hannah Fry is someone that you should uh, look into in your spare time. Then, um, when we're done with that panel discussion, a little break, we're going to have a moment where we're going to kind of bring it all together, uh, Dan Sheffitt is going to, who's had a, a life as a lawyer, um, 
and his life as a lawyer has centered on um, things that computers do that are not so good, like not forgetting bad things you did, like your DUI from third grade when you're too young to have even been in a car. Those kind of things really bother Dan. And then we're going to hear as the ending talk for the day, uh, two people who discovered who their real father was as opposed to their mother's husband, again, because of big data. Really happening now all the time. And we are lucky because uh, I knew all of those people. They were friends of mine in Schenectady 60 years ago. And, um, and I'm, I'm very excited about listening to them tell their story of the impact of big data on their lives. So that's what we're going to do. And the commitment here from us and Craig and Larry Hunter, for sure, and Mira, who have become friends, is that we're going to build on this big data theme every year until it's over, uh, hoping that we're going to be among the more sophisticated amateurs in the field of big data so that we can understand it, maybe not fear it, but understand it and use it in ways to make our lives better. So let's go. That's, that's, we're ready to start. Thank you.